Hello everybody, it's Wyvern here with a another bit of Total War Warhammer 2 Twisted and the Twilight gameplay. Now this time around it is going to be a multiplayer matchup of Chaos Warriors against the Force of the Wood Elves controlled by the wonderful Rubber Duck of War. And we are once again squaring off on the map Oakenhammer and looking to test out some of the new kit what else can now field? Chaos in this match has not received too many changes. They've stayed a fairly stable faction. A handful of units like Chosen have gotten some minor buffs, um, which whether or not those are necessary is debatable, but they've gotten some minor buffs and tweaks here and there. And really, the majority of the Chaos roster has stayed pretty untouched. Uh, however, Wood Elves, of course, have gotten some massive newcomers that could really shake things up. Uh, Stag Knights, Zoets, and even Blade Dancers could potentially, or Blade Singers could potentially have a niche here against Chaos uh, and help counteract some of the heavily armored troops that you'll often see from the Chaos forces. So uh, we wanted to test those out, see some, see some of them in action here, and that's what we're going to be doing. So going over the builds here, my Chaos build, pretty generic. I think it's a fairly normal Chaos build. For my Lord, I'm rocking Sir Thrill the Ever Chicken. Fairly safe pick against Wood Elves. He does have a hefty missile resist of 50%, uh, which helps negate incoming missile pressure, especially from Way Watchers. Uh, a decent spell selection with Searing Doom to nuke down squishy low HP Elven infantry. Plague of Rust to counteract armor. This might seem odd against Wood Elves, and probably a patch or two ago, I would have considered dumping this, or really the last patch I would consider dumping this. But now, with the potential for Zoets dropping a 60 armor on any unit that the Wood Elves have, thus spiking a unit like for example, Great Stag Knights, or themselves up to 120 armor, much the Streakin who go up to uh, the 140, I believe, and or a Tree Man who will go up to 170. Uh, with options like that now hitting the table, I really do think Plague of Rust is rather valuable here and can make your Horsemen and Horsemasters punch way above their weight class against potentially heavily armored units. You can't wait those, necessarily wait those 45 seconds out waiting for your opponent's armor to wear off. And uh, in the meantime, you need to be punching, so this will help Marauder Horsemen or Chaos Knights Appliances do work. Finally, we do have Final Transmutation, and this is, of course, the Blob Buster, here to crack up whatever blob uh, this Rubber Duck decides to bring, or potentially bring, especially if he managed to bring, say, a Tree Blob with Drysha or Durthu and a Tree Man, and uh, maybe a Branch Wraith, units like that. It should help break that up for sure. We also have Arcane Conduit and Stand or, or Stand or Die, both very useful self-buffs as well as uh, AoE buffs. Help keep my troops in the field, because especially my Infantry core here is pretty trash. Uh, they're not going to be winning any beauty contests. Um, now, for the front line, four Marauders as well as the Smear Guard. Cheap, cheerful, efficient against units like Eternal Guard, and good at soaking up arrow pressure uh, for on a budget. And more importantly, they're also very quick. So 35 and 38 speed means they can close the gap quickly, they can dish out a lot of pain, and perform rather well against a unit like... Um, Eternal Guard, vanilla against vanilla word answers, maybe spear dancers or dryads, units like that. They'll do okay. Um, and that said, Blade Singer's probably going to be a wrench in the plan. These guys, these ladies, will definitely give these guys a bit of an issue. So we'll see how they perform. But really, they're just a chaff line to screen for the much more important units that are hitting the flanks. Now on the flanks, we do have Marauder Horsemen and Horsemasters. Uh, two over on this flank, three on the other. So going pretty heavy on the skirmish line. Uh, very mobile, can fight in melee against um, units like Blade Riders, and can certainly charge in against infantry if needed, so they're not a pushover in that front either. And with their reasonable AP values and very high non-AP damage, they, the chip damage will definitely add up over time. Uh, so Horsemasters especially are rocking a 18 and 8 split, so especially if Sir Thrill throws down a Plague of Rust, they just melt face. Behind that, two Chaos Knights with Lancers are there to cycle charge and beat the snot out of Wood Elf troops in melee. Uh, if we see Great Stag Knights, of course, we should have the advantage. Chaos Knights do have respectable combat stats and a very high charge bonus, which should just punch through the flimsy survivability of Great Stag Knights pretty efficiently. And we do have two Exalted Heroes to back them up. These guys are completely stripped down. They're just on horseback, but that is enough. They do still hit like trucks. 420 weapon strength is no laughing matter. On top of that, they got 65 melee attack, 45 melee defense, 100 armor, and 3,500 HP. So very respectable combat characters. And uh, look absolutely dapper here, riding along on these minuscule ponies, really. And kind of a disappointing factor with uh, Chaos, <laughs> Chaos Knights in general. Just how, just how small those horses look, so comically small. Now for Rubber Duck, he's immediately teeing off on me with these very annoying Glade Riders. Two of them have Hagbane tips to debuff my formation. One's just the vanilla variant and looking to get some early damage in on the Horsemasters, though we kite away with absolutely deft handling here 
evading most of that pressure initially. In the meantime, the Sisters of Twilight were on fire at will and were on their single shot mode, so they kind of waste those shots there on these Chaos Marauders. Definitely not what they want to be doing in life. And we do see a Magic Missile here streaking away. The Talon, uh, the, um, we can see here the, uh, the Eagle Quiver firing off and streaking towards my characters here. It actually plows through the Chaos Marauders, but doesn't hit the Exalted Heroes. So a little bit of misfortune there. Uh, worth mentioning that th in this matchup, Duck actually didn't bring their passive or their uh, passive self heal. So these ladies will not be self healing uh, if if their HP drops too low. They do not have the um, conjoined destiny ability. So uh, obviously that's an expensive ability, and this way you get to you free up some money that you can use for say hagband tips. So I do think it makes sense, especially on a low HP mount like the Eagle. You don't want to waste money on that. Two Blade Singers backed up by Ward Answers, Azurite Spears, and two Eternal Guard with Shields do make up the front line. These ladies will definitely tear a new one into my uh, front line infantry, but should hopefully be run over by my Chaos Knights and Horsemen, Horsemen and Horsemasters. So we'll see how they perform. They do still have a hefty AP damage, so I gotta be careful um, about how I approach them and try not to get stuck into combat with Chaos Knights because they will suffer. There is also a Glade Captain supporting them, and now this. Uh, this uh, this Lady of the Woods here is rocking a, a homing arrow, much like uh, the much much akin to normal Glade uh, or Glady and Glade Lord projectiles. She also does grant Horn of Isha as well as the Dance of Loic for additional melee defense and attack. And you can see here, trying to protect these Blade Singers, who I am very much trying to pressure with my Horse Masters and Horsemen, just trying to get that early damage in to make it hard to heal. Finally, Ariel is striding into the into the battle here, and she is looking terrifying. Strange choice here with Tempest. I don't think you really need to worry about flyers from Chaos, uh, but otherwise, Apotheosis, great little heal there, and Soul Stealer, devastating to blob. So I got to be very careful. And with Berry Wine, she can absolutely heal a key target like these Blade Singers for a massive chunk of HP. She also does have the uh, Ancient's Protection, which will make her troops much tankier and Life Bloom for the heals, although not messing around with the missile buff. Unfortunately for me, you can see Marauders already routing here off the field, but we do charge in with Exalted Heroes against this Eternal Guard and immediately start shooting through them. As I mentioned, Exalted Heroes, no laughing matter, they will do some network. 420 weapon strength against such a lightly armored infantry is terrifying, and they are having a field day. Over here in the meantime, Blade Singers getting caught out with their pants down, and uh, or they would be getting caught with their pants down uh, if they were wearing any pants, but these these fine ladies of the forest are just getting absolutely obliterated. Unfortunately, Soul Stealer is countering act, counteracting that, melting Four Star Thrill and the Knights here, so that is less than ideal, I would say. And the Blade Singers are holding their own, especially with the help from the Glade Captain, who is also doing a number on the on the Chaos Knights. And you can see they're already down to 32 models, definitely not where they want to be in life. So we're just going to leave the Chaos Marauders here to stall and fall back. Now over here, we do see the Blade Singers have closed into melee. I do think this is a bit of a misplay though here, because as you can see, Rubber Duck has not swapped dances, and I think when you're fighting a unit like Marauder, Marauders, because in this situation you're not really going to focus the Exalted Heroes, you're looking to mince through the Marauders, I think you really want to swap to the non-AP dance, get that 51 weapon strength against Light Infantry, and shoot through these Marauders in seconds. So I think that's a little bit of a micro mistake there, and uh, probably costs them some precious time, and allows my Chaos Knights to just get a devastating charge in. Granted, getting a little slow down there, but get a devastating charge into the Blade Singers. You can see models dropping left and right. And uh, with the Exalted Heroes and Marauders still there as a anchor, these ladies are having a terrible time of it. In the meantime, heals going down here from Alarial, trying to keep the Blade Singers in the fray. And as I myself counteract that move with a final transmutation, looking to crush this Wood Elf Pocket once and for all. Nice do charge in against the Eternal Guard, taking advantage of 80 charge bonus against a minuscule 40 armor to cause devastating damage, especially with the final transmutation, which melts Ariel, and more importantly, melts the Glade Captain, who finds herself terror routing and then simply breaking in the face of the pressure of the Ever Watcher. Unfortunately, Continue Hail of Fire continue, disrupts and damages my horsemen pretty badly here. So as I send them off chasing after the Glade, the Glade Captain, they are taking an absolute pounding from those Hagman tips, slowing them down, making it hard for them to really get going. In the meantime, you can see some horsemen all the way out in the back there, some Chaos Marauders all the way out here. So it's definitely slipping up on Micro on my part. And the battle does very much hang in the balance. Certainly, Rubber Duck is 
seemingly on struggle street uh the glade captain has routed uh, most of the infantry is now fleeing the field getting overrun by that very mobile chaos infantry however some of them are rallying in the distance blade singers rallying over there ariel is still in rather good shape and she does cause terror and does cause quite some damage and there's still a decent amount of ammo on all these glade riders and do keep in mind ariel is not the most stable lord so she gets knocked over all over the place killing her is no mean feat and if Duck can remove my knights in this situation, it's very possible the Sisters of Twilight can potentially still clutch this game out. So things are definitely not quite over. Uh, and you can see here the Exalted Hero push, pushing in after the Glade Riders. Gets in the melee, actually gets a swing there. Though it seems that he doesn't even hit, which is kind of pathetic. This Glade Rider just like, eh, nah, I took a battle axe to the back of the head, but eh. I'm a wood elf. I don't really have too much brains, so I don't have to worry about it. Now, I do see Rubber Duck swinging in here with the Sisters of Twilight diving in on my rear, and I decide to pull away. I'd rather get pockmarked with a few arrows than get stuck in melee with the Sisters. Uh, so we do pull back there. Chaos Knight's getting po uh, peppered down with arrows, and keep in mind, Hagbanes have 7 AP, so they're, they're no joke there. Uh, and I do simply decide to take the Exalted Hero and chase after Ariel. That's what we're doing there. Blade Dancers, though, separated from their kin, are going to get overrun here alongside the Eternal Guard. So definitely a big win for us. And over here in the meantime, you can see the Glade Captain is going to get torn to shreds by the pack of Fairy Angry Horsemasters and Horsemen. And uh, once she's caught with no further support, she's going to get run off the field. There's just no hope here for the Glade Riders to get back in there. Uh, they are picking off the Chaos Marauders uh, alongside the Sisters of Twilight. But at this point, we're definitely in the endgame. Um, and... Really, all that remains is that little pocket of skirmish cap and aerial. And granted, these troops are basically at full HP, and I'm a little separated, but with a half unit of Chaos Knights on the field with the Ever Chicken at almost full HP, uh, and some Exalted Heroes in decent shape, it's definitely not a great situation. Ariel here does pop Apotheosis on herself, trying to keep herself in the fray, but it's not quite enough. The weapon strength is just brutal. She does have some gorgeous attack animations there for sure. Smiting the foes of the Woodland Realm. And just caked in blood at this point. But, um, although I do have to kill her to the very end because she is unbreakable, she is still doing some devastating damage. You can see the sisters there pop in shots as Ariel launches tendrils of vines from the ground. But, um, these champions of chaos will not be routed. Just look at those amazing animations. I love those spines, like, shooting out of the ground. Um, but she is staggered there. She is being chased back as uh, glory to the chaos gods is being earned. Now, another Apotheos is going down, you can see she's just healing it like mad. As, as we do pressure back the Glade Riders, trying to get them off the map, really just leading our Ariel at this point and the Sisters. These guys are actually getting caught and whittled whittle the down. You can see actually the Exalted Hero leader just leaving. I thought Ariel was done for, but she decides to stick around for a little longer. But trapped against Chaos Knights and Exalted Hero is definitely going to be endgame for her. Um, and she does actually topple to the ground. And with that, Rubber Duck's army does shatter and a pure victory for the forces of chaos so going over the comp here i don't think the composition i brought here is too unique for chaos i think it will remain viable going to this next patch you just have to be very aware that heavy duty ap melee is now an option for wood elves and armor buffs are a major option for wood elves i think those are the biggest shakeups that you will see high armor wood elf armies even if it's in a little burst the fact that you have to deal potentially with 120 armor is something you have to consider you have to keep in mind when you build um, for Rubber Ducks build, it's definitely uh, very experimental here. I think a little bit too much investment in very expensive characters ended up hurting a lot here. Uh, obviously, Blade Singers, uh, both very expensive. Ariel, as well as the Sisters of Twilight, very expensive. And there just wasn't really any mass to stop the Chaos Knights from just rampaging around. And you can see here, uh, damage dealt, uh, the damage val da value might not seem that high, um, but. And obviously the one unit here, these guys got focused on pretty hard, but this unit here, 77 kills, over 6,000 damage dealt, uh, and much of that was against high value targets like Blade Singers uh, or units like uh, Azurai Spears, so that, that is a big problem there. Uh, Mirror Guard, of course, actually not performing as well as I would have thought, but if we look at the stats here, you can see just how much damage was dealt. Um, the Exalted Heroes earning a massive amount of uh, value there, uh, as did Sarthrell, of course, with his nukes. 3,200, just able to nuke that blob and uh, punish Ariel and um, the... Blade Captain. Um, sisters, as you can see, chipping all game, 10,000 damage dealt, but so much of it was against worthless targets like Chaos Marauders. Uh, and it's just very difficult. If, if the Sisters don't have a good target, they're kind of on Struggle Street. Um, they really need to have elite infantry to shoot at or some big single entity to snipe at. Uh, if they don't, not the most useful characters. 
I really do think one major mistake, though, uh, was not swapping the Blade Singers over to non-AP mode, uh, which I think could have swung at least the Marauder fight a little faster. Remove the Marauders from play, and uh, it would make life a lot easier, because the Marauders were continuously disrupting Rubber Duck's army, continuously supporting units like the Exalted Heroes, who were otherwise might have been on Struggle Street otherwise, and screening for units like the Horsemen and Horse Masters. Uh, so... I think trying to pop non-AP mode and overwhelm the squishy infantry first, and then picking apart the rest of the army later might have been a better move. But uh, that's just hindsight, 2020 sort of thing. Um, otherwise, uh, fun little army here trying to make the blade singers work. I do just think a little more mass and staying power needed to be had there. Not entirely sure what I'd cut for it. Uh, probably aerial, honestly, and um, maybe maybe bring in like. Two wild riders or something instead. Um, try to get a very cheap caster in there somehow. Um, maybe downgrade these ward answers to Eternal Guard. Get a very cheap, uh, get a very cheap caster character, and then bring say two units of wild riders. And I think you'd be in a stronger position to stall and protect your blade singers, or even bring Treekin uh, as as a support tool because Treekin are now much more respectable um, with their higher me melee attack and uh, weapon strength. But regardless, we'll play to Rubber Duck here. Uh, as usual, um, I do thank you all for watching. Be sure to check out Rubber Duck's channel. I will be leaving a link down in the description below. So give him a look. He's got great content there. A lot of multiplayer-oriented stuff and uh, different unit testing and that sort of thing. So uh, just great guy. Has great content. Definitely, definitely worth checking out. And a uh, huge thanks to him for playing with me here. So thank you all for watching. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye for now.